So we found a few things. Number one is that the pressure wave that's emanated by a explosive blast is in fact injurious once it gets above a certain threshold. And that certain threshold varies a little bit, but it's roughly about maybe uh, 10 to 20 pounds per square inch. And once you get a threshold like that, then about that point, your brain is going to start to um, uh, not to function entirely properly. Once it gets higher pressure loads, then cells start to die, and even higher pressures uh, than, than other structures start to go. And in fact, it's the basis behind a very important effort, DARPA effort, that was created by Dr. Jeff Rogers at DARPA, which is a blast gauge. In fact, what Dr. Rogers did was uh, assemble really a team of expert um, engineers, and they built a little itty bitty gauge that you hang on your uh, equipment or hang on your helmet, and what it does is it measures that pressure wave. And that's really important, because absent a biomarker, let's have an environmental sensor, kind of like a dive watch. I've gone too deep, doesn't mean you have the bends, but you're at risk. And that's what Dr. Rogers did, and that's, com that's a direct a leveraging against data that we developed in the prevent program that led to the development of the BLAST gauge. And in fact, Dr. Rogers has been so successful with the BLAST gauge that in fact 11,000 warfighters presently are wearing it to, in, right now, today, while they're on patrol out in Afghanistan. And that's being used really to help quantitatively identify who's at risk of a brain injury. Terrific. So let's take a scenario. So there's a, a, a group of young Americans out on patrol, and they uh, encounter an, an improvised explosive device, an IED. Boom, it goes off. Now uh, a few people tumble down. Fortunately, nobody is seriously injured. But you wonder, oh, have they been exposed to a point where they, some of them had a tra mild traumatic brain injury? So generally, there's about you know, 20 or 30 of these fellows uh, and, and gals out on, the, on this patrol. So what you do is you go up, and now you, what you can do, instead of just arbitrarily wondering who did or who didn't, you can go up and uh, look at Dr. Rogers' blast gauge and push a little button. If it shows up green, they were below that blast threshold, and they're fine. If it's yellow or red, they probably are at risk, and then the medic would come up and do a MACE exam. The MACE exam would then say, oh, if it's normal, they're fine, but if it's abnormal, it's time to go see the doc. So now, if you can imagine the scenario, how quickly you can screen all of these soldiers uh, uh, for traumatic brain injury, it, instead of being you know, half hour hours, it's down to just a handful of minutes. And now you take the ones who are potentially hurt and you send them to the doctor, and if they in fact have a concussion, they go into the concussion restoration center, and they're taken off the line and given very systematic uh, care. And, then, and what's that systematic care? Some brain exercises, rest, and a graduated um, uh, reintroduction to their, their activities. And we found that it's very successful. We get well over 98% of our, our soldiers back to duty within five days by using this approach. That's what I'm hoping that we'll be able to do for our young soccer players and football players and the like.